I've been using NordPass for about a month now, so thanks to them for sponsoring. But I didn't say yes to the sponsorship until I tried it and decided that this is going to be the password manager for me for a lot of different reasons. First off, you've got XChaCha20 as your encryption model, and you can store not only your passwords, you can also store credit card information and other personal information, and then that's all encrypted and stored on their server, but they can't see anything. Only you have the key to unlock that encryption. If you're curious about the security, they were audited by an independent company, Cure53, who've also done several different audits of various uh, platforms and also VPNs. Above and beyond that, you can easily share your passwords with your family and friends. If you want to give someone your Netflix password, you wild beast, you can do that very easily. And it's encrypted there as well. The main thing for me was the interface is really clean, sleek, and that means I actually use it. Whereas before, I just wasn't actually using it all that much because it was so clunky. Have all of your information entered into your favorite online stores, make your purchases, and then get back to doing what you want to be doing, which is probably gaming or your work. I don't know. They've got native apps for Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS, and all the core functionality is completely free. When you're signing up for NordPass, be sure to use the uh, link in the description. It's nordpass.com slash tech syndicate. So head to the link in the top of the description. Now on to our regularly scheduled program. So I thought I was going to build the most epic computer in the world this year. I'm not. I've just got a pile of parts here and I'm staring at a screen and I'm obsessively checking to see if I can get things in stock until this week when I finally get everything ordered. Let me tell you about the saga that I've been through this year. Let me tell you about all the parts I have in the build that I'm going to do. And I'm going to explain each part that I have selected. First off, this machine is going to be used for audio work, as in like making music and stuff. Uh, number two, it's going to be used for working on the Unreal Engine, making stuff in there, who knows what. Uh, and third, it's going to be used for gaming. So those are the three main things and I wanted the most power I could get since I'm stepping back from the, the, the grind of creating hardware reviews and hardware videos and focusing more on fun content and then also working on my projects. I wanted something to, uh, I wanted like the best for that. So in this video, I kind of like just didn't care. I went all out and I got a Ryzen 5950X from b and h no no let's step back let's let's do the whole story so in january of 2020 i decided you know what it would be a cool idea i'm going to make my new build that i'm going to use on all these projects and it's going to be a build to sort of commemorate the best of the best as of the year 2020 you know we've rolled into a new time and so let's just talk about the best stuff from the last 20 years and i was going to do like a little bit of a recap and then say like the king right now is the AMD 3950X. So I got a 3950X. Great. And then right about the same time, I was contacted by Corsair, Corsair and they were like, hey, we're, we've got these new water kits, you know, these, these new like DIY water kits. You get the radiators, you get the pumps, you get the tubes, you get the lights, the fans and everything. And then do it yourself. And I was like, well, that'd be a better cooling solution for the 3950X. Sure, I'd love to look at that. So there we go. Um, otherwise, I was probably just going to go with a regular all-in-one cooling unit, um, all-in-one water cooling unit for this, because I like to mess around under the hood and change things, so that's one thing, and also and also I wanted it to be done fast, but if Corsair was gonna send this over, I would love to look at it. So some time went by, and I was like, hey, where'd that, uh, where's that water cooling stuff? And uh, I got a GPU, I got a 2080 Ti, and I'm ready, you know, I've got everything ready to go, including a, a really ridiculous motherboard that I'll show you in just a second. Right here, this is the one I got on the screen. The Azeroc Aqua beautiful beautiful motherboard it's lonely it's been lonely so some time went on and i was like hey what's going on and apparently some of the fittings were out of stock because of all the ridiculous stuff that's going on basically because 2020 so i couldn't get my hands on the water cooling unit and i was like okay that's fine so i just kept doing my other work and a few months later i was like hey it's been a few months where's where's that stuff and they were like okay what happens is whenever a fitting goes out of stock the entire order gets gets stopped and then we have to replace the order. And every time we replace the order, something else is out of stock. So it was like, God, why? So I couldn't get the water cooling unit. Finally, water cooling unit is shipped at the exact same time that the 3080 is announced. And I was like, well, now my 2080 Ti is completely irrelevant. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And so I was like, let me just get a three series card. And we know how that turned out. I've been searching for three series cards over and over and over again. And I finally got one about two days ago, and I'll show you how I did it. It's a little, little known 
method to get these. I'll definitely show you how to do that in just one second. So anyway, that is on its way. And at that point in time, AMD's like, by the way, we got some new CPUs, everybody. <laughs> I was like, my 3950X is no longer the best. And this has to be the best because I've, I've decided that this will be the ultimate. And if I don't use the 5950, you know, the 5950X, people on the internet are going to say things about me. And that'll be sad because they'll be like, oh, way to go, bro. You just thought you were going to make the best system in the world. <laughs> That's what they sound like. So, um, yeah. I, I've got it on order. So I ordered it at BNH, like I said, I got it. I ordered it at 6.05 a.m. on the first day that it was available. And it was like, yes, your order's placed. And I was like, I did it. I did it. I got it. <laughs> I was on BNH and I was like, I can't believe I got it. And then a couple of weeks later, I was like, where's that thing? I got an email that said, listen, we got too many orders. And so now we're back ordered. And we expect to have your ship to you sometime before March. Fucking March. So we're just going to make this video and show you all these beautiful pieces that I'm not going to put together into a system until probably fucking March. First off, let's show you my method for how I got the 3080. I Buy Power is having all these really interesting sales right now. And a lot of the boutiques get priority shipments when it comes to not, not shipped by U.S. mail priority. I'm talking like they're in the front of the line. They get priority when it comes to inventory on a lot of these new graphics cards. So if you want a new AMD graphics card or even a new NVIDIA graphics card, you put one of these orders in and then as soon as it shows up, you get the entire computer shipped. So check this out. They've got these deals where like right here, $400 off. They didn't pay me to do any of this, but there's like $400 off this system. Oh, cool. That's a little deal. And I go through and I just like subtract things. Uh, $5 I don't care about. But I like, you know, subtract things that I don't want. Oh, this thing, let's take it $50 down. And I got it on a day that there was a huge sale, go sale going on. A gigs of RAM, there goes 40 bucks. Now we're down to, there we go. Um, let's see, 50, there, 3080, right there. 1588 bucks because there's a sale going on right now. The day that I got it, it was like 1560 something. So, you know, and you can also check this out, come down here. Okay, you, you got to make sure you get the right wattage when it comes to the, or they won't ship it. So you're going to have to splurge for the 750. They won't let you do it, which uh, brings the price up a little bit. But you can also get this shipped for less than the price that those idiots are scalping it for on eBay. You get the entire system plus the 3080 or the 6800 XT or the 6900 XT or even a 3090 for probably less than the price of what scalpers are charging people on ebay those jackasses anyway uh, once you get down here at the bottom you can also say no windows operating system and then you know 1600 bucks like i said mine was like 40 dollars cheaper because it was a better deal that day but each day there's a lot of cool deals and that's how i ordered my 3080 they told me it would ship within a couple weeks so it'll still be here before my 5950x and the main thing for me is i don't have to wake up in a cold sweat having dreams being like oh i gotta check best buy oh i better check to see if i can get this stupid thing not going to happen anymore. Anyway, yeah. Look at that beautiful card there on, on Amazon that I can't get. So let's talk about all the parts I have sitting here and talk about why I, I chose them. Some of them chose me because it's what it's like to be in the tech business. People will send you things and that's not going to happen anymore. So this is my last hoorah. I've never said the word hoorah in my life. So I've got the ASRock Aqua X570. It's probably the most premium X570 motherboard out there on the market. And the entire front of it is just filled with water channels so that you can cool not only, um, well, you can cool the south bridge over here, but you can also cool the CPU with all this. You don't need a water block. It's all built into this giant piece of armor that's going to keep everything nice and cool. So I think that's pretty cool. And it'll support up to 5,200 megahertz with the, with the memory, which is that's kind of ridiculous. I'm not sure. We'll have to see what I can do when it comes to the Infinity Fabric. So this absolute unit was sent over from ASRock, and I haven't been able to do anything with it because of the CPU issues. They even engraved Tech Syndicate on it. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, and I can't wait to put it in my system and hopefully use it for five years or more. Um, but it's just completely loaded. It's got everything. You know, 802.11ax, Wi-Fi. It's got uh, two... Intel uh, Thunderbolt ports on the back. Jeez, <laughs> it's got your gigabit LAN, got dual, of course. It's also got one of the 10 gig LAN cards, so that's ridiculous. So that's gonna be 
just the heart of the system. And that's another reason that I, I thought it would be nice to use the water cooling. And then for the graphics card, I'm not sure what GPU they're going to be sending. I hope it's this one I, I, or one of the Asus cards or one of the EVGA cards. Both of those look really nice, but I had so much luck with the Asus 2080 Ti. I've loved that GPU. It's in my other rig right now. So if the CPU comes in before the GPU, I'll be using the 2080 Ti until that comes in. By the way, does anybody want to buy a, an iBuy Power system without a graphics card? I've got 32 gigabytes of the Corsair Vengeance DDR4. And, um, well, I've actually got 3200. This is the 3600 speed, so I wish I'd gotten the 3600. But uh, I got this first. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get this. So I think the four dims looks better. So this is just how it looks. I mean, look at that. It looks beautiful. But uh, I... I want the ability to upgrade to 128 in the future if I want to because I'm crazy. And I thought a little more RAM for what I'm doing is going to be better than a little more speed. But, uh, you know, combination of both. I ended up getting the 3200, which is probably okay. Um, I might want to push that a little bit. I'll see if it can handle any more than that. If I can get it to 36 and 1800 on the Infinity Fabric, I'll be very happy. So I'll try. But I'm not sure if this RAM will do it or not. We'll see. But it's also really pretty. The operating system is going to go on a Corsair um, MP600 1TB Gen 4 by 4 And that'll give me those really crazy read and write speeds. I also like the large heatsink they put on there. But I'm not going to need it for um, what I'm doing with the ASRock motherboard. I'll just put it under the heat shield that's on there. But regardless, it'll stay nice and cool. For my secondary drive, I told you we're going all out. We've got the Sabrent 8TB in VME. Now this is a uh, three by four, so it'll get like 3,500 or more on the read and write around that range. I'm not sure exactly. I did a video on this, so you can refer back to that if you like. But this is where I'm gonna put like the game and a lot of my creative stuff because it's huge and fast. It's like a the best of both worlds. It's bigger than any standard spinning hard drive that I have other than the 10 terabyte stuff I've got in the NAS, but it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Speaking of NAS, I'm also going to put one of these in there because it's, I've had it for like the last five systems and it just will not die. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. And it will not stop. That's basically this drive. It just goes. So I'm just going to take it out, and keep it going, put it in the new system. All right, let's look at the water cooling solution that we've got here. I've got the XH305i from Corsair. And this is a really cool all-in-one unit that comes with a lot of different things. So let's name off all the stuff that it comes with. You get the XD5 RGB pump and reservoir combo that's really easy to mount. And the thing I like about this is it uses the tried and true D5 pump that's really quiet and should just last. These things are very well tested. I know some other companies recently have made some uh, D5, they, they, they re-engineered or made improvements on it. But until that's been out for several years, I think I like the idea of sticking with a D5 because it's what everybody uses and it really, really works. So it's got that in there. We have two different uh, radiators. Well, I've added one on, but I got the um, XR5360 and then I also have one of the 240. It's the uh, fat one. Where did I put it? Yeah, the XR7240. So we got a nice big fat 240 and a long skinny 360. It's Abbott and Costello. And that should keep that 3950, I mean, that 3950, that 5950 X nice and cool, even with a little bit of overclocking. So looking forward to that. And uh, uh, much to uh, Corsair's chagrin, I'm sure, I've decided to go with some soft tubing and I might even sneak in there and put some quick release stuff on this. And the main reason is, is because I know hard tubing looks better and I had to buy the soft tubing separately because this unit comes with hard tubing. Where's that hard tubing? There it is. And the hard tubing's um, pretty nice. It's acrylic. It's gonna be a little more brittle, but um, it works It works just fine. So you get this, and you also get the deburring and the reaming tool, my favorite tool in the world. It comes in the box there, so all that's, all that's available. Plus, you get the bending tool. You gotta heat it up first. You're gonna have to provide your own heat cannon, your own heat gun, which I do have one. So when it comes down to it, I might just sit back and think, yeah, maybe I will. It also comes with the fittings for that. I didn't I don't think I opened up the fittings, but it does come with the fittings in the box that you're going to need to hook all that up. And above and beyond that, you also have the water block. So this is the XC7 RGB water block. I think it's a very pretty water block, compatible with pretty much everything modern. It's got some nice nickel plated 
cold plate right there. I'm using the Azrock Aqua, so I don't really need this. I guess I'll just, I'll have it in case I need it for my next build. It'll just be here, which is cool. Comes with three fans, the LL120s. And these are nice because you don't just have the RGB in the center. You also have the ring around it. Uh, they're like the premium fans and they sound pretty good too. I mean, like there's not a lot of extra noise and stuff. And then for all the RGB, if I, if I actually plug up the RGB, it does come with the Corsair IQ Commander Pro Smart RGB Lighting Fan Speed Controller. I have to level with everybody. I like the way RGB looks, especially if you get like a uniform single color purple or something like that. I do like it. I think it's cool. And I think aesthetic is important because it allows you to connect and identify with things and it's not superfluous as uh, a lot of elitists are going to like stick their nose and be like, eh, color. No, I think it's really cool. But I am going to put this in a silent case and stick it in the floor. So yeah, we'll just see if I go with that or not. Who knows? And for the case. So um, I think the white case actually does look really nice. I've got the Corsair Carbide Series 678C. And it's a silent case, which is going to ma be made a little less so because of the side panel window. But, you know, when you've got all these tubes and some lights in there, you do want to see it, right? I mean, it's going to go on the floor. Sorry, Paul. So anyway, that case is nice and big and sexy, but also quiet. And I like the fact that we have slotted holes to mount your fans, so we should be able to move things around. Uh, we can, you know, remove different uh, hard drive. We can remove all the little hard drive uh, sleds if we want to and not have to use those. We've got bitumen foam on the back. At least I think that's bitumen foam. We can put the 360 up top. And then on the front, I'll put my 240. I don't know. I might put the 360 in the front. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll do a diagram of how I'm going to set up the loop before I get going on all this. And the other thing that's really cool is this one has... A spot for an optical disk drive which there was a period of time where it became a joke like optical disk drives you don't need one anymore and now i think people are kind of getting back to nostalgia especially since we're all locked inside and we've got some time to play some games and i want to be able to install my old dvd based and cd based games on this machine so i'm gonna put an optical drive in there i think i've got a plex store floating around here somewhere plex store dvd burner I'll throw that in there. Why not? It's there. I'm going to use it. For the power supply, we've got the HX850, and I think that's about as low as I would want to go with this setup. Um, I've got it here. I'll, you know, I'm going to, I'll math this thing, and if I need to, I'll put a thousand watt in there, but I think the HX850 will work. It's modular, it's platinum, um, and I've used these on several different builds. They're solid as a rock, so uh, the fans will also be completely quiet if you're not pulling a big load. You know, they'll ramp up when you're playing a game or something like that. And even then, you can't really hear them, so I do like that power supply. All right, so that is the core of the system. Now let's talk about some of the products that I'm going to use for creative purposes, mostly for audio. There's one gaming thing that I'm definitely going to put in here. I don't this is expensive. I got one for 40 bucks not too long ago. But I decided to put a sound blaster in here. I know we made a video not long ago talking about how you don't need sound cards and I still believe that when it comes to headphones and music. However, going back to that whole retro game thing, there are a lot of EAX games that I really enjoy like the Thief games, Dark Messiah of My Magic, Oblivion even, and just a lot of games from that era had EAX effects and you can simulate some of it with OpenAL, but going between OpenAL and the real hardware I found that I had fewer headaches and it also sounded a little bit better. Not too much better, but just the main thing for me is I didn't want any headaches and fussing. I like to cut down on as much fussing as possible. So the Sound Blaster X5 Titanium Fatality probably has the, um, it's one of my favorite EAX5 sound cards. And it also has some really good sound quality, better than the Autogy, even though I have a soft spot for the old Autogy cards. Those were cool. So I got one of those. But then when I'm just listening to music or hanging out in Windows, I'll be using my ARC Mark II. This is the uh, Mayflower Electronics ARC amp, and that's what I'll be using. Just plugging my headphones into because it's so clean. And it also has microphone input. And the microphone input is going to be fed through the USB, so you're not going to have to worry about any nonsense. It's not a pass-through, so you're not going to be beholden to those ugly uh, inputs on your motherboard. My headphones, I have not changed these. Oh, they make, make them in black now. So I still use the Biodynamic DT880s. Those are my favorites for long use because they are really comfortable on the head. They don't have a ridiculous clamping factor like some other headphones out there on the market. So they just, they feel like wearing two pillows and they sound 
really good. They may not be my favorite headphones out of all the ones that I have. The Grado Labs probably have a more fun sound, but they're definitely a little more hi-fi. These are a little bit, a little bit more neutral. They're not as neutral as my Sony 7506s, but sorry, 7506s don't have enough bass for everyday fun use. So these are my favorite all arounds. Love them. That's what I'll be using for my monitor to play all my games. I'm still using my Viotech 49 inch super ultra wide monitor. Uh, this is 5120 by 1440, which is 32 by nine. And you know, speaking of all that fussing, fussing to get an old game to work at ultra wide resolutions has been pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, because it's where the outcome is worth the five minutes of fussing. So I'm using that. Got this little accessory right here to plug all my stuff in. This is a 12 way USB type C docking station, all kinds of stuff. You got extra HDMI ports and display ports and extra ethernet, which I don't need, but I mainly use it for like a lot of the USB and stuff like that. And then I also have this, I have this keyboard, this Impact LX88 full 88 key, semi-weighted keyboard for working on music and stuff. I won't get into that right now because it'll probably bore a lot of people. And for my peripherals, I am using pretty much everything from our Phoenix store right now. Um, and I was using a mechanical for a while, but I've gotten so used to the membrane keyboard that, that we make. And I also like the fact that it's uh, water resistant, so you can like spill a little bit of water on it. But it's soft, and uh, this membrane, we, you know, I was over in China, we looked at a lot of different membrane uh, keyboards, and this one didn't feel like, you know, $290 Topras but it felt enough in that direction that I was happy because it has a very satisfying, it's not mushy, it's very poppy. And I actually prefer this to, to red switches and it's almost up there with brown switches when it comes to like comparisons to cherry. So I like this a lot plus, you know, it's a membrane so it's gonna be cheaper to make and cheaper to uh, sell. So I'm using that one on pretty much all of my stations right now. Also, it's very quiet for streaming and doing video work. And then for the mouse, the standard issue has been my favorite mouse shape for a long time because it was inspired by the IntelliMouse and it's the one I'm still using. Also, I do like the 3310 sensor a lot, uh, despite the fact that the 3360 is nearly identical, except for it's better if people do the slamming. I don't do that, so I'm, I'm very happy with the 3310. And that's the mouse that I'm using, the standard issue. And then my mouse pad is just one of these big Finnick Stealth mouse pads right here. There's third party reviews. I'll let those speak for themselves on this stuff. And you should too. All right, so that's gonna be my system in a few months. Sorry we couldn't show you the full build, but we at least got to talk a bit, right? And hang out. And I hope you enjoyed talking about all this stuff. But remember, hardware is not the thing. It's the thing that gets you to the thing. And that's where we're going in the future. We're going to the thing by using hardware. Yes. All right, that's the end of this video. Head over to EpicPants.com. Thanks to Corsair for sending over those parts. And... Uh, the rest of them it's it's a rough year it's been a crazy year if you have any other suggestions on how to get parts without getting scalped on ebay other than going to like i buy power or something like that and grabbing stuff with their daily deals because that's out of all the different uh, manufacturers and uh, system builders that, that was the one i found that seemed to be the cheapest but you can check out cyber power as well they also have deals maybe on different days so check them out and let people know in the comments but uh that's the only options i have right now I will see you soon.